So how do you set up and sign up for Webull and start paper trading? What's going on, guys? It's Ricky, and welcome to part two of the Get Started playlist. I want to congratulate you for making it this far, and yes, you're going to have to sign up for a trading account, and trust me, it might sound exhausting, but this is, in my opinion, the exciting part. You are just getting started. Embrace it, right? So let me go ahead and start sharing my screen and break down how you can sign up for Webull. So uh, Webull is available to everyone in the US. You do have to be a US resident, uh, and they are going to validate that. So you go to webull.com. Uh, I did provide you the link. It's the first link in the description down below. It is my link, and if you use my link and deposit $5 on your initial deposit, you will earn up to 12 free shares on the Webull trading application. I wanna remind you, you can have more than just one trading application, and this is the one that I personally use and the one that I will be showing you how to actually set it up. So again, it's the first link in the description down below and they do have a limited time 12 free sign up uh, free 12 free stock sign up bonus as long as you did deposit at least $5. So let me, let me go ahead and break this down for you. So once you get to the website, you just click sign up and it's pretty much like signing up for a bank account where they validate you. I personally signed up for an individual account. Uh, they do allow you to sign up for an IRA account that does max you out, I think about 7,500 uh, for your overall deposits. But again, it's really up to you. Uh, for me, I set it up as an individual trading account it's going to ask you a couple of personal questions, but again, you can answer that to the best of your ability. Um, but let me go ahead and just now show you once you have the actual, you know, once you get approved for the actual Webull application, you will get an email, right? Because you have to apply for it. Once you get approved, you will get an email. You can go back to it and it allows you to download the desktop version. And this is on MacBook. And it also allows you to download the uh, mobile application, which I have on my phone. Uh, but how do you set up the paper trading? So I'm going to show you how to do this on desktop. So this is the real trading account, right? So you can see that this is under stocks, right? This is how I have mine personally set up. Uh, I'm going to show you how to set this paper trading. Obviously, it doesn't look as pretty. Uh, and it looks kind of overwhelming. Like, what is this? What is this? What is this? You know, uh, you know what's going on here? I'm going to show you how to set it up kind of like mine, right? It's not exactly like what you see over here, but it's uh, pretty dang similar, right? It has your um, overall stock and chart that you're looking at. Uh, it has the RSI, the MACD, it has my EMA, my moving average, uh, the level two, which is pretty much where people are buying and where people are selling for this specific stock. It has the quote, so quote information for this versus, you know, this doesn't have any of the quote info. Um, I think this is a really nice setup. This is how I have, my, how I have mine set up. Uh, you don't have to set yours up like mine. I'm just explaining to you in this video, this is how I'm going to show you how to set it up. So uh, I wanted to test it out first just because I was having some issues. Uh, I've never set up the paper trading. I've never paper traded on Webull myself because, well, since I started using Webull, I've had a real account. Uh, but I've heard good things um, when using paper trading. My only suggestion is to try to treat it as real as possible, right? You're just doing yourself a disservice if you just you know, oh, it's fake money, I'm just gonna mess around with it because that, then you're gonna pay the price when trading with real money, right? So one of the first things that I'm going to be doing is, let's see if I remember this correctly, is I'm gonna extend the watch list all the way down. So my watch list all the way down here, I'm gonna move all of this stuff. So I personally don't care for the clock. If you do, then feel free to keep it. So I'm gonna remove the clock and all you have to do is right click it. Um, I wanna overlap these, but sometimes it looks like it has trouble allowing me to move the widget. Oh, there it goes, let's see. Okay, so it allowed me to do it. Now I overlapped them together, position and orders. So position is any positions that I have open will pop up here. Any orders that I have working or filled or canceled uh, will pop up here, but I'm gonna move this on over all the way to the right just so it's out of my way. And this is the order book. So this is something that I want to, I personally prefer to have down here. So based off of my preference and how I have mine set up, you know, I have my order book down here. So that's what I'm going to do with this one as well. So um, the first step would be uh, moving this a little bit to the right, just so I can um, increase the size of my chart. And then I'm going to move this just move everything out of the way. First thing is, the thing that's most important to me is obviously the charts. I want that to be as big as possible, right? All right, and then we're gonna do the order uh, book, which is the level two. So that's where people are buying and selling. And again, this will make more sense, especially if you are part of LPP. I explain all of this of what level two is, how we use it, um, on the Webull trading application. And again, that's all on LPP 2.0. 
but let me go ahead and bring this down. So normally when it comes down to order book uh, or level two, I only care for like the first two lines of the order book. This is just telling me where people are buying and where people are selling. That's the bid and the ask. Uh, and this is just the chart. You could actually just a little heads up, remove the chart. If you don't want the chart, then it goes away. But if you want the chart on, then I keep it on. I think it looks nice. I'm a, I'm a visual person. Um, and then one thing that I do have to add is you just right click, you add widget and you add quote and the quote should pop up. So here on level two, I'm gonna pop that up on the top right, right? Making sure that it looks similar to that. Time in sales is uh, position is gonna go up here. We're gonna go with this down here. This is just gonna be a nice little, as small as possible. There it goes there. And now order entry, I personally don't care too much for this, uh, but just in case you do, if you just, you know, I, you could always just overlap them and it just becomes a tap, right? I think orders are more important. So I keep orders up there and I think positions are more important. Order entry, again, those are just like, you know, open orders and stuff like that. So not something I care too much about. I normally get filled right away and I'm gonna drag this all the way down here. So this is time and sell. So this is pretty much like uh, just a better understanding uh, or a deeper look into uh, level two, right? This is all the buying and selling pressure that we're currently experiencing right now. So just a little heads up on that. And then you see this huge open tab, like what is this gonna be for, Ricky? Am I just gonna have a black square there? Uh, no, not necessarily. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna click add widget uh, and I'm gonna click on all widgets. And as you can see, there's you know a big breakdown. So stocks, paper, this is where I'm gonna click the buy, uh, just the classic trade, which is gonna allow me to buy and sell stocks, right? So uh, normally the default account for paper trading is set up at $100,000, as you can see here. And this is where I will be able to just, you know, like I'm gonna show you in the next video, show you how to buy and sell uh, with a market order, with a limit order, all that good stuff, the number of shares that I wanna buy. If it's at a limit price, then I control the price. If it's at a market price, I buy a market price. Again, you know, I'll explain this a little bit more in uh, the later video, uh, but um, this is pretty much how I have uh, my actual trading account set up. Look, it looks very similar. I have orders, position, and note. Uh, this one is a little bit different. This one doesn't have notes, but it has position and orders and then order entries. You can always add more widgets. You can mess around with it based off of your preference. Um, and you know, when it comes down to now the indicators, right? You can see that there's you know not the RSI, the MACD is not here. Those are indicators that I use. And again, I break down in LPP. Uh, you can see that it does have the moving average, but it doesn't have the EMA. And this is all set up differently. Uh, so what I do here is um, you can turn on the MACD, you can turn on the RSI. And then I click on indicators and I'm going to turn on EMA and then I'm actually going to edit them. So one thing that I can do is you can always edit indicators uh, right on over here. So edit indicators and for my EMA, I'm going to change my length. This is all preference. I set, I changed mine to 45, which is uh, a nice middle ground. Some people like to follow um, with a tighter EMA, some people with a more loose EMA, just depends on how aggressive you are. But again, explained in more detail in LPP 2.0. Uh, now for moving average, um, I like mine to be green, right? And then the overall input for my moving average is gonna be 200. So there it goes, 200 moving average, my 45 EMA, the MACD, the RSI. We got the level two, the ability to be able to buy and sell, time in sales, orders, and we got the quotes. Uh, now, the last thing that you do want to do is, especially if you plan to intend to use this layout pretty often, just so you don't, you don't always have to set this up, that's gonna be dreadful, right? Uh, you click save, save as paper template, right? So when you click on that little save button, you can save it as whatever it is that you want. So anytime that you click new layout, you should be able to pop it up here. And as you can see, I've already saved one. I called it personal layout. You can call it whatever you want and it should be able to be saved. And you can always go back to that same layout. So. Uh, that is how you set up uh, the paper trading on Webull. Uh, if you have any questions beyond this on how to set up, I guess you can send me a direct message via Discord, which should be linked down below. Uh, but the next step is learning how to buy and sell a stock on Webull. And um, I'm actually gonna show you also how to short a stock, and that's going to be in the next video. So congratulations on making it this far. You're almost there, halfway there. Um, and just very excited to be a part of your process and move on to the next video. That's going to be part three. Like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.